I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Craig Cobb from TraderCobb.com, fellow YouTuber as well. Craig, great to see you and great to have you on the show, man. Man, it's an absolute pleasure, Ashton. Thank you so much for, uh, for having me. You're very welcome. If we could kick this off with a wonderful introduction from you, a little bit about how you got into trading and what you're doing with your trading groups right now, uh, that'd be a pleasure to hear. Yeah, sure. Look, I'm, I mean, I've been trading for now 13 years. I, I, I've uh, always had an interest in markets. I started investing at 16 years old uh, with my dad's help and uh, basically just sort of whet my appetite for what, um, what I wanted to do long term. I, I had a lot of good mentors and I, they all had massive teams uh, to make their money. And I thought, I don't really think I want to have the hassle of having a huge team. So trading sort of fit that, uh, that objective there of being able to sort of do it all yourself, which comes with some, uh, some negatives as well, because it's effectively you're carrying everything on your own shoulders. Um, I moved to London uh, when I was 21 or 22, uh, moved there and basically saw on the, uh, on the sign on the tube a, a sign that said, you know, uh, tax-free trading. And so I went along to a seminar, saw the seminar, and uh, ended up getting a job uh, with that seminar group. And um, they had a group of traders that were sort of coaches and mentors. So I, I got in there at six in the morning and uh, worked with them for three hours before my shift started. And, and then I stayed with them until they left in the night to learn how to trade. So that was really my introduction into trading. I, I blew three accounts, so I lost. Uh, I had a little business when I, where I was from in Noosa Heads in Australia, and uh, I, I blew uh, three accounts quite quickly trying to go it alone and worked out very quickly that you know, you need to have some structure in this space, and the entrepreneurial spirit wasn't really going to help me as a trader. It required expertise. So I just kept working with mentors, changed companies, worked around the world in various places from New York, New Zealand, uh, all over Europe and whatnot, and I was very fortunate to be working with some of the best traders uh, in their field. So not so much uh, institutional traders, they, they traded their own money, which is kind of what the path I was on because a lot of people that are in institutions figure, well, it's difficult, how do you trade your own money? Whereas mm -hmm. I'm the opposite, I'm like, how do you trade someone else's? I'm so comfortable with trading my own money. Mm -hmm. So. You know, fast forward 13 years, last year I got introduced to uh, crypto uh, again. I was introduced to it in 2013, didn't take any part uh, because it wasn't really a market for me to trade, didn't have the tools, didn't have the mm. charts, didn't have the leverage. So I left it alone and uh, came back to it in, well, sorry, it wasn't July of 2018. I keep saying last year now, of course, being at the start of the year. It was July 2017. And, um, and from there, really, the volatility uh, of course, as you know, Ashton has been phenomenal. And um, because we've got the ability to go long and short now, mm -hmm. you really can make an income um, in any direction of market, depending on what the product is. So it's um, it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. TraderCobb.com was founded through frustration that knowing that there wasn't any real professionals that I could find out there that had the sort of level of experience that mm -hmm. I was willing to trust. Um, I know they were out there. I just couldn't find them at the time. And um, yeah, here we are, mate. That's great, Craig. That's such an interesting backstory, you know, hearing about your father and the mentorship, and now you're passing that on through your groups as a mentor mm. to others trading now. So that's great, really great to hear. So can you tell me a little bit about, you know, how much content you've been producing uh, online and, you know, what your communities are looking like and where they're distributed? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the, most of the content that I put out is free. Okay, so, you know, I do a podcast every single day on the TraderCobb Crypto Show. Uh, we've had some great success with that, some massive guests, and um, it's just that was kind of crazy how fast that took off. Uh, so every single day there's content there, one or two uh, pieces of content. On YouTube we do stuff. Uh, on the website, so if people go to tradercob.com, they can subscribe to a free newsletter there at the bottom of the, of the homepage. Um, within the community, so I've got a Slack group. Uh, they get videos once a day, six days a week from myself or my team, which is basically, I don't do um, uh, tipping service or um, what do they call it? Um, uh, signal service. I, I don't do that because I don't believe in that. Um, you know, the old saying, uh, teach a man to fish, feed him for a day. Mm -hmm. Sorry, feed a man, a, give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach a man to fish, feed him for life. That's sort of my objective here. So I, I teach people my courses. Mm -hmm. uh, the strategies are taught there in a checklist trading system. And then I point people in the direction of the things I'm looking for so they're empowered mm -hmm. to make their own decisions. And then hopefully they don't need me any longer after however long they need. So the community has been a real blessing. Um, it's the thing I'm the most proud of uh, for the subscription, uh, sorry, for the subscribers in there. Just what Watching them grow together, help each other. There's there's no swearing, there's no immaturity, there's no silly um, 
just it's, it's a really mature group of like-minded people that are doing really really well so um yeah it's 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 been fantastic it, there's a lot of free stuff on, on my twitter and on my uh, on my facebook which is just trade a cob that's great awesome craig so you uh you meant you said it yourself you know uh give a man a fish and you'll feed him for a day. And that is a common thing that I've seen in the cryptocurrency industry. There's a lot of signal groups, as you said, people just say, buy this coin, buy that coin, it might go up. You know, you're really teach you're really trying to teach the, the technical analysis part of it as well. And you did mention that you traded a lot in the traditional markets. And a lot of our viewers here, we do have a lot from crypto, but we also have a lot of viewers from the traditional markets as well. And mm -hmm. you said it yourself, you saw crypto in 2013 and, and you were already trading, but you didn't jump into it. And there was some hesitation there. And then you did jump in in 2017. You know, there's a lot mm -hmm. of people in the stock market right now that are still on the on the edge right there and you know just from your experience jumping in you know what would you say to them is there a very large gap compared to forex markets stock markets compared to crypto or is it is it really easy to just jump in oh look it depends on your techniques mate i mean look th th there is a big gap there's, there's no doubt about it there's a big gap in you know liquidity there's there's nowhere near the liquidity uh of of traditional markets of course there's nowhere near the level of professional tools that are available for trading foreign exchange commodities F, you know futures all that sort of stuff um but 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 there lies the opportunity and and that's the thing right you know Emerging markets are where opportunities lie. Once the market is established, um, you know that's great. You've got all the tools that you need, but a lot of the uh, a lot of the volatility gets sapped out of it until we see a a market correction. Now markets fall harder than they go up. Uh, it's a true statement. And and look, I'll, I'll be looking to trade in traditional markets again. You know, if if we do see a sustained down run. And the simple reason is, is that, you know, in 2008 during the GFC, that made me really as a trader. That was, I did very, very well throughout that period. And if I see something else as an opportunity like that coming up, then I'd be crazy not to take my abilities to those markets. But I'm focused more on the cryptocurrency at the time, for the time being, simply because, you know, for those that are out there in traditional markets that are trading right now, consider your risk okay so if that's if that's my risk right there that's my risk multiple and in stock shares fx i'm looking for maybe two or three times that risk multiple maybe over you know depending on the duration of the trade on the time frame you take might be a few hours might be a few weeks in crypto for example i got a short on and i put this out publicly a short on Bitcoin around 5,700 back in November. Mm -hmm. um, really, I had a $100 stop, so super tight stop. Uh, it, everything just sort of lined up for my strategy. Shorted that, and in the space of a week, I got a 17 to 1 reward to risk ratio. So let's say I'm risking 1,000 bucks. Don't scale out that 17,000 return. So if we look at reward to risk ratios and apply the volatility of crypto, your reward to risk ratios go through the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are trading on larger accounts, you will need to focus more so within that top 10 space. But when they move, guys, I mean, they just move so well. And if you're a trader, volatility is what you need. And this market has it in spades. Definitely. There's definitely a lot of volatility. And I, I would expect there to be slightly less volatility in the years to come as there's more adoption. Uh, but right now, it seems like we're sort of in the Wild West, right? Yeah, I, I mean the world. The, the, the statement "Wild West" it, it makes it sound like it's uh, a floozy, like it's um, you know it hasn't got credibility. It, it makes it sound scary. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if I like that. Uh, just simply, I know it's just a terminology, but the wild people go, "Oh, it's the Wild West." That's sort of what they say when they're talking about something that's dodgy. This market is not dodgy. Mm -hmm, There's sure. definitely some manipulation, but same with other markets, man. Like sure. every market is manipulated, whether they admit it, whether they get proven, or whether it's swept under the rug. It happens. Mm -hmm. Typically, they go after the little guy. I've seen it time and time again. They'll go after somebody small. The regulators go after somebody small that they can actually litigate and win. Mm -hmm. Because if they go up against someone like Deutsche Bank, well, the litigation proceedings take a long, long time because the bank balance of a Deutsche Bank is far greater than the bank balance of, say, an SEC or ASIC or the FSA. So they try and avoid going in unless they know that they have absolutely no shot at losing. Um, so it tends to be the little guy that, that gets done or pinned. Or when they leave the company, it's when they get done or pinned. Definitely. And how much in your groups are you focusing on on risk mitigation? Because I know with volatility, it's much riskier than than traditional markets. You know, how much is that a factor in, you know, every decision that you push towards your members? Yeah, mate, it's it, everything's about, I mean, look, the, the, 
the truest statement about trading is this trading is risk management full stop it's if, if you're if you're someone who sells cars and you've got no cars in the lot well your business is done right if you're a trader your cars are your capital. Without capital in the bank, you, you're not a trader. You, you're just playing a video game looking at a chart, right? So it's in incredibly important to make sure you maintain and preserve your capital at all times. Don't think about making money. Think about what you can lose. That's the most important Definitely. thing at every single step of the way. And that's what we talk about in the videos. That's what we talk about in the group. That's what we talk about throughout the entire training courses. It's it's all to do with risk. If, if you start to think about making money, you'll typically not make money. Focus on process is what's important. That's a great tip, Craig. I appreciate that. Um, and I was looking through your guys' site and I saw you know, up front there's two or three basic strategies that you sort of teach, yeah. the fundamentals and then some other strategies. Could you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, there's there's three trading strategies that I teach with complete combined checklists. And the reason for that is that markets move in three ways. They go up, down, pause and move in a trend or obviously, you know, whichever way they're trending up or down, they, they tend to pull back into a certain equilibrium point, take a little breather and then move again. That's my crypto cradle strategy. you got to give these things a name too, man. Like it's just a strategy, but you know, you, people need to to, uh, to familiarize themselves with it. So there's a language, right? The other one is uh, markets move up, down and they bounce. So they, they continue to move really, really quickly. So there's a strategy there called the Fibonacci booster where I, of course, use Fibonacci. Uh, to capture a move quite quickly in a fast flowing, fast moving market. And the final ones are Bitcoin breakout because markets, the third thing they'll do is they'll consolidate before a move. Now, I know most people will know what a consolidation breakout is, and those same people will probably be, even be in the position where they go, oh, breakouts. So many times they enter into a breakout and it goes the opposite way. And and yeah, that, that does happen. So we've got an ability there to use leading indicators to help us to weed out a lot of those trades that could go against. So that the reason there are three strategies like that is because that's how I've been trading for the last 12, 13 years. Um, and uh, that's how markets move. Try and keep it real simple. That's the focus of my life. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Words to live by. Wonderful. That's it. So what are what is your long-term plan for, for 2019? I know 2018 was quite the ride. It was a fun ride for those that were skiing downhill in the crypto, which just held the whole mm -hmm. time. Uh, 2019, we don't know what to expect. Um, as you said, you know, earlier, the, the market sort of does what it wants, but you know, how are you going to play this out in 2019? Oh, look, mate, I'm pretty happy to do exactly what I did last year. Um, I, I'm good with either direction. Um, I've got an investment portfolio that took an absolute beating. Uh, I did manage to close quite a few uh, or take quite a bit of profit at 15000 last year. Uh, it was pretty obvious to me that, you know, these moves don't continue forever. So, sure, you might go, well, you didn't get out at 20. It's like, I don't care. I bought at three and I got out at 15, one of the best, you know, three-week investments of my life. Uh, and then I bought back in at nine. So, yes, I have taken a bit of a beating mm -hmm. uh, with everybody else. But long term, I'm looking at this five years plus, sure. okay? So, for me, this is a uh, it's a speculative investment into a new emerging technology. I'm aware of that. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I can trade either direction. So, whether the market goes up or down, I just need trends and I can trade. And the focus has been big time uh, towards the back end of 2018. Just to try and get involved with more businesses in this space, build as many businesses, have a part in as many businesses as we can to use our expertise to help them grow because I don't see blockchain technology going anywhere and I think uh, having a little bit of uh, speculative land across different uh, businesses within the ecosystem is probably a pretty smart play as well. So we're just trying to... Um, essentially get a, a footing across many different opportunities, uh, whether it be business, trading, or investing. That's great, Craig. And yeah, definitely diversify into other businesses. There's so many yeah. more businesses that are coming up and being accelerated into the growth stages uh, that are implementing blockchain technology and even outside of the financial industry, you know, for example, event chain and ticketing and gaming and gambling, yeah. all these great things. So there's so much to learn that it's hard to keep up. Um, but it's an exciting space, that's for sure. We're still very early though, right? For all these traditional investors that haven't jumped in yet, um, or crypto people as well that are looking to find out more about the markets, uh, what's the best way for them to get in contact with you guys and get involved? Yeah, look, the best way to do it is really, I mean, we've got a, a couple of free courses available as well, which is literally to talk to traditional market players, to introduce them to what blockchain is and, and 
really break down in a simplified form as to actually what the opportunity is. So just jump across to tradercob.com and uh, there's a little contact us page there. If you'd like to contact us, we'll drop you through that link and you can jump in and have a look at it. But um, across Facebook, uh, you know, obviously Twitter as well, uh, YouTube, all all the Trader Cobb channels and uh, you can jump on the Trader Cobb Crypto Podcast uh, to get involved and have a daily listen. Awesome. Hey, Craig, it was great speaking to you. That's all the time we have for this time. Uh, but I'm looking forward to following up with you soon in 2019. And let's hope that you and your members are prospering. And uh, I look forward to it. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Mate. I really appreciate your time. And to the audience, thank you. Thank you.